Tēnā tātou katoa, good evening. News Hub can reveal the Vatican is investigating New Zealand's highest-ranked Catholic over child sex abuse allegations. The complaint against Cardinal John Dew was filed last year by a man who claims that he was abused while staying at an Upper Hutt orphanage in the late 70s. Police have just concluded their own investigation into the allegations, saying they were unable to locate enough evidence. Cardinal Dew, who delivered the Catholic Church's official apology to survivors of abuse, says it's a false allegation and took News Hub to the Supreme Court in a failed bid to prevent us reporting the accusations. Now, a warning, this story is confronting. Our investigations correspondent Michael Mora joins us now. Michael. This is Stephen Carvel. When he was seven years old, Steve stayed here at St Joseph's Orphanage in Upper Hutt. The year was 1977, and 46 years later, Carvel has come forward to accuse two priests who were at the parish at the time of sexual abuse. They were Father John Dew, now a cardinal, and Father Noel Donoghue, who is now dead. Steve Carvel took his complaint to the police, the Royal Commission and the church last year. A detective spent months investigating but closed the case last month. Police told News Hub they could not reach the evidential test to provide a reasonable prospect of conviction. But Carvel has now been told a church inquiry overseen by the Vatican is underway. The Cardinal, who until May was the leader of the Catholic Church in New Zealand and until now has never had a complaint laid against him, has strenuously denied the claims, telling me it never happened. Steve Carvel is deeply affected by memories of alleged sexual abuse. The abuse still continues today because those memories and, and those obscene occasions, those, those things in life that I never ever want to feel, I still today feel those intense feelings. The memories which have surfaced in recent years are of being abused during a stay at St Joseph's Orphanage in Upper Hutt when he was a little boy. His admission records confirm he was there for 12 days in November 1977. I saw that I was seven years old and it was at that point in time that I really broke down, you know. I thought I might have been a bit older than that. But once I found out that I was seven... That was a seven, deeply traumatic moment for you? Oh, it was the saddest moment of my life. Carvel says on his first night at the orphanage, he was woken by then father, John Jew. He said, you've been a naughty boy, you've woken everybody up in the room, um, but I'm going, to, I'm going to let you off. How would you like to play a game of catch me if you can? He claims the game swiftly became sexual in nature. Uh, things got a bit weird, so instead of tagging, it became touching. According to Carvel, the abuse escalated when Jew carried him back to bed, pulled down his pyjama pants and sexually abused him. And you're sure it was John Jew? Yes, 100%. But Cardinal Jew says it never happened. I did not abuse Stephen Carvel. Are you sure? I am absolutely certain that I did not abuse Stephen Carvel. 100%. 100%. Why should the public believe you? I would hope that people would believe someone who's now had 48 years of experiences as a priest and has never had an allegation made against me um, and that this has come totally out of the blue 46, 47 years later and I'm telling my truth. Clergy directory records cited by NewsHub confirm that Jew was one of four priests at the Upper Hutt Diocese in 1977. He rose through the church ranks over the following decades and in 2015 Pope Francis made him a cardinal. As the head of the church here, Jew went before the Abuse and Care Royal Commission three years ago to make a public apology to victims abused by Catholic clergymen. We offer no excuses for this their actions or for ours that have caused you harm. Can you reassure survivors that the apology you gave at the Royal Commission still stands today? Absolutely. I stand by every word I said in that apology. Every word I said. Steve Carvel says Father Noel Donoghue, another priest at St Joseph's at the time, also harmed him. Again, Carvel's memories are that the abuse occurred during a game of tag in the middle of the night. Carvel says when Donoghue couldn't catch Steve, he became angry and alleges he was raped. 
It's the most painful thing that I've ever felt in my life. You were just seven years old. Did you understand at the time what was going on? The, the predominant thing, Mike, was mummy and daddy haven't done this to me. Mummy and daddy do not hurt me like this. Jew remembers Donahue as a mentor and is surprised by the allegation against him. I find that very hard to believe. Very hard to believe. And why is that? Well, just an expected of, of a person that, the person that I came to know. What Steve says he endured and witnessed hasn't yeah. always been clear in his mind. In late 2019, the flashback started. Those memories became increasingly detailed and overwhelming. That tends to be, interestingly enough, the primary way that these memories seem to come back. They tend to come back initially as fragments, and then over time these tend to get pieced together into the memory kind of being um, reorganised and then remembered. Psychology professor Martin Doherty says it's uncommon for people to fabricate memories of sexual abuse, but they may misremember certain details. The majority of cases, it would seem, appear to reflect something that's more accurate rather than something that's made up in a wholesale fashion. In his legal bid to stop News Hub reporting the allegations, Jew's lawyer questioned Steve's credibility, saying the source, one person's memories, is not reliable. This allegation is false. It was never part of my life. Why do you think Stephen has made this allegation against you? I have absolutely no idea. I do not remember him. I do not remember any of the children from the orphanage because we didn't go to the orphanage. Jew was stood down from priestly duties, including officiating at weddings and funerals when the complaint was received. Was it difficult for you? Very difficult. And it meant um, two very good friends who died in that time. I had to tell their widows, sorry, I'm not allowed to do this because an allegation's been made against me. Steve signed a sworn affidavit concerning the alleged abuse and asked a district court judge to waive his automatic right to name suppression so he could tell his story. The reason I've decided to share my story and come forward today is in the hope that other victims out there um, draw some strength from what I'm doing. He wanted to speak out because he believes it is the right thing to do. So Michael, what more do we know about the police investigation? Well, Cardinal Jew was interviewed by police at Lower Hutt Police Station in early December. No charges have been laid. And in a statement to, from police, they told News Hub they would always consider new information that may come to light in relation to an investigation. Police have worked hard on this case to locate all available evidence. However, investigations into historic cases such as this are complex. Evidence is often harder to locate or no longer exists and potential witnesses and suspects may pass away and physical evidence may no longer be available. The new head of the Catholic Church, Archbishop of Wellington, Paul Martin, confirmed Cardinal Jew has not been involved in public ministry since he became aware of the complaint. The other priest, Steve Carvel, has accused Noel Donoghue died in 2005. Carvel's complaint does identify a nun he says was involved in the abuse. We have chosen not to name her. The Sisters of Mercy who ran the orphanage refused our request to access their records to independently verify her presence at St Joseph's at the time. The Court of Appeal was later told in an affidavit from another nun that she had been living and teaching in Palmerston North in the year the abuse occurred and could not have easily travelled to Upper Hutt to visit. And two further nuns said Carvel's story was untrue and could not have occurred in the way he has described without others hearing it or being aware of it. Steve Carvel has suffered from complex post-traumatic stress disorder for many years, which he attributes to the trauma of the alleged abuse. His complaint was sent to the Royal Commission after the conclusion of its public hearings. The Commission told News Hub that accounts and experiences received would still inform its deliberations. Michael Mora, Tenakwe.